All right, let's talk about product and quotient rules when dealing with exponents. So my learning targets are I will simplify exponents when multiplying and dividing them. So we have got several definitions because this is a new unit. So the first definition is an exponent. Hopefully we know what exponents are, but if not, they are the small numbers raised after a constant or a variable. The product rule is something that is new. So the product rule states that if you have a base with an exponent times the same base with a different exponent, you can then add the exponents together. So x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. I know that doesn't make much sense yet, but we will explain why that is what it is in a minute. And the second one is quotient rule. So it states very similarly that the base to a power divided by the same base to a different power is equal to that power or the top power minus the bottom power or in this case x to the a divided by x to the b is equal to x to the a minus b. So let's understand what that product rule means and how it does what it does. So firstly we're going to look at this guy right here this 2x times or I'm sorry x squared times x to the fifth. So x squared, an exponent, which again, hopefully we've seen, that's the little guys right here. Um, an exponent means that it's whatever the base is, in our case x, times itself that many times. So for x squared, it means that I'm gonna take x and multiply it by itself twice. So I have x times x. x to the fifth, it means the exact same thing, but only but instead of just doing it twice, we're gonna do it five times. So I have x times x times x times x times x. Okay. All of these x's, when we count them up, because notice the parentheses, they don't have to be there because the parentheses mean multiply and so does this little dot right here. It all means multiply. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven x's. So technically this is x to the seven because there are seven of them. That is why our rule works, because if I took 2 and added 5 to it, I get that x is, or I get that the exponent is 7. So x squared times x to the fifth gives me x to the 7. Let's look at another example, very similar, okay? We have x times x to the third. Well, x does not have an exponent. It does, it's just invisible. It's an invisible one, because that means there's only one of them. So that gives us just x inside the first parentheses. x cubed means that there's three x's. So I'm gonna put three x's next to it. So now we count up how many x's we have total. One, two, three, four. So that gives us x to the one plus three, which gives us four, okay? So again, the product rule is saying if you have the first guy and the second guy, we can add them together to get my final answer. So that's what I did here. 2 plus 3, I'm sorry, 2 plus 5 gives me 7, and 1 plus 3 gives me 4. Now this one is a little different because I have x cubed times y to the 6th. Now if we break it all up, x cubed gives us 3x's, y to the 6th gives us 6 y's. Now what I did previously is I was able to count them all up, but the only reason why I can't do that here is because this guy is x's and these guys are y's. Now notice my product rule, it says x to the a and x to the b. You can't have x and y, they both bases have to be the exact same. So because of this, we just write my answer x to the third, y to the sixth, because there's nothing that I can do to simplify them. All right, let's talk about quotient rule because quotient rule does very similar things. So to understand quotient rule, quotient rule, we are going to expand them all out to understand. So x to the sixth, that means on top of my fraction, I'm going to have six x's. And on bottom, I'm going to have two because it says x squared. Now you're gonna see all these little dashed lines. These dashed lines are there because in a fraction, if we have a number on top and the same number on bottom, we can cancel them out. Let me give you a little snippet of why. Because if I did 2 times 4 over 2 times 3, I don't know, okay? What most of us would do is say, okay, well, 2 times 4 is 8. 
and 2 times 3 is 6. So we simplify that down because that is not fully simplified to give us 4 over 3. Now what you may have noticed, or hopefully have noticed, is that 4 over 3 is right here, as well as being over here. Well, what we could have done, we could have skipped this step entirely, because since I have a 2 on top and a 2 on bottom, technically I can cancel them out, just leaving me with 4 over 3. So same thing is true here. If I have an x on top and an x on bottom, I can cancel them out so that there's no more of them. So that guy can get canceled out and this guy could get canceled out because there's, one, there's two x's on the bottom and there's enough for two x's on top. What I'm left with though is one, two, three, four x's on top. So I'm left with just this. Well, just like what we did up here, we count up all of our x's, which gives us x to the fourth. Now this little step right here is me using my quotient rule. If you have the same base, but different exponents, we take the top minus the bottom. Well, the top was six, the bottom was two, so six minus two gives me four. Let's do another one. So what if I had x to the fifth and x to the fourth? We're gonna expand out, because remember, we're just trying to understand the quotient rule. So x to the fifth means that I have five x's on top, and x to the fourth means that I have four x's on the bottom. For every x that I have on top, I have an x on the bottom, and I should be able to cancel them out. So we're going to cancel out one, two, three, four of them. That leaves us left with one lonely x. So since I only have one x, my answer should just be x. Well, that means that five minus four, top minus bottom, gives me one, so x to the one. Now, notice I'm not putting x to the one right here. Just like when it's a coefficient, you don't always have to put one. One is that invisible number. So just x is what's left, so my answer is just x. All right, last one of understanding before we do some examples. We have x to the fifth over y to the fifth. That means I have five x's on top, and I have five y's on the bottom. Now, just like my product rule dude up here, he is at x's and y's. But when at the end, I couldn't put them together. Same thing is true for quotient rule, because if you see up here for quotient rule, your bases still have to be the same. In this case, they are definitely not the same. So because of that, we just leave my answer x to the fifth over y to the fifth, because there's nothing extra that we can do for him. All right, let's do some bigger examples. So my first example that we're going to do is this guy right here, the 4xy to the fourth times negative 2x squared y to the fifth. The first thing that I like to do is I like to color coat them. The reason why is because each piece goes to a certain other piece. So for example, my 4 and my 2, those are both orange in my case because they are both coefficients. x and x squared are the same color because they both are x and y to the fourth and y to the fifth are the same color because they both are y. Now that I have this, I should be able to put each individual piece together. So let's just talk about my four and my two because they are both orange. The parentheses tell us to multiply. So four times negative two is going to give me negative eight. Okay, we're then gonna go over to my next guy. Okay. My next guy right here is x and x squared, because we've already taken care of four of negative two, so we've got x times x squared. Well, we just talked about this. Remember, we, by using our product rule, this guy has an exponent of one, even though you can't see it, and this guy has an exponent of two, so one plus two gives me three, so my exponent should be x to the third. The last one is my y's because they are the last ones left in the parentheses. So y to the four times y to the fifth. If we use product rule, we have four plus five. Four plus five gives me y to the nine. That means that my final answer I can put in order just like this, giving me negative eight x to the third, y to the ninth. All right, here's one that looks that is product rule. Again, I like to color code them. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to see. So the coefficients I put in orange, the A's I put in green, the B's I put in pink, and the C's I put in blue. And just like this guy up here, I'm gonna take each individual piece to figure out my answer. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is, ooh, I'm showing too much. The first thing that I'm going to do is 2 divided by 4. 2 divided by 4 gives me 1 half. So the first guy is supposed to be 1 half. The second one is my a's. So I have a squared over a. Now, if we use product rule, which I hope that you do, I'm sorry, not product rule, quotient rule, we take the exponent of the top minus the exponent of the bottom. If not, some people really don't understand quotient rule as well. So what they do is they do still expand. So I did both, okay? So with expanding, you have two a's on top, one a on the bottom. We cross off the a's and we are left with just a. So if you're going to expand, you should just be left with a. If you're going to use quotient rule, 2 minus 1 is 1, so you're left with just a. All right, same thing for this guy. We're going to go to b. So b is b to the fifth over b squared. Again, you can either use product or quotient rule. It does not matter. I did both. Okay. So we've got five b's on the top, two b's on the bottom, or you could do five minus two. 5 minus 2 gives me 3. Over here, if I cross them out, I am only left with these 3 at the end. So that does still give me b to the 3, or b cubed. All right, the last one is c. So c, we have c to the third divided by just c. And again, just like last time, you are it is your choice whether you want to put it in exponent, expanded form, I'm sorry, or if you're going to use the quotient rule. I like the quotient rule because it's fast. But 3 minus 1 is what's going to give me my answer. Or you could put 3 C's on top and 1 C on the bottom and cancel them out, and you are left with 2 C's. So that means you have C squared. Since I've gone through and done all four pieces, my answer is complete. So my final answer is 1 half A B cubed C squared. All right, last one, a little tricky because it's got both product and quotient rule in it. Now, it does not matter which order you do it in. However, I did it by doing product rule first. So in order to do that, I'm going to color code it so that it makes it a little easier. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that I added a one underneath this guy and, and he didn't have that before. But remember that any number divided by one is a fraction. So that's what I did. And I'm gonna put all of my coefficients in the same color. So six, 18, two, and one. And then my X's are gonna be the same color and my Y's are gonna be the same color. Now, this isn't in a good place for me to just use product and quotient rule. So I'm going to have to do top times the top because we can do that with fractions and bottom times the bottom. So if I do top times the top, I'm going to do six times two because those are both in orange. Well, six times two gives me 12. Now, notice I have y cubed over here and y over here. So y cubed times y, this has an exponent of one. So three plus one gives me four. Now, the only thing I didn't talk about is this x squared. Well, x squared doesn't have a friend over here, so he's just gonna come down with us. So because of that, the top guy is gonna be six times two, which is 12. The y squared, I'm sorry, the x squared is gonna come with us, and the y cubed times the y is three plus one, which gives me four. We must also do the bottom. So the bottom gives me 18 times one, which is 18, and then all that I have left is x. So at the bottom, we should just have 18x because 18 times one is 18, and x by himself just comes down. Now we should be able to use the quotient rule because now it looks like a better fraction. So of course, we're gonna do my oranges first. So my first orange guy is 12 divided by 18. 12 divided by 18, you can either put in your calculator or you can know to simplify offhand by dividing six by both. I think that's enough. Oh no, not six, maybe. Two, yep, so six. <laughs> so there you go, it should be two over three. Then we take our x's. So my x's are x squared and x. We have x squared at the top, x at the bottom. So two minus one gives me one. And then last but not least, y to the four. He's just by himself, so y to the four becomes y to the four. When we expand all this down, we have two thirds x y to the fourth, which is what my final answer is. If you have any questions, please feel free to come and see me during tutoring.